Welcome to Beelzebub Cottage, Ireland. This is the home of Goddess Permaculture, a movement that has evolved from permaculture itself. And this is Beelzebub Cottage on the very first day that I saw it. I didn't do much to change the cottage. It still has the same roof and the same windows and the same door. I took off the porch and I built a wooden porch, which is more sustainable. And I put double glazed panels into the windows. I kept the windows because they were hardwood, probably from some bereft rainforest. This is the driveway looking down from the cottage again on the first day I saw it, which was around the 1st of May, which is why it's called Bealtaine Cottage. I put in a gravel driveway and um, planted, and I planted, and I planted, and I stopped counting at 1,100 trees. So you'll see the regeneration and the beauty of a woodland garden. But most importantly, the resilience of Mother Earth, that when you do make the effort to regenerate, that amazing things begin to happen. As you can see, I spent quite a few years strimming and mowing and keeping the rushes back while I planted. Hugely important. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a plan. I simply looked at the cottage. I looked at Mother Earth and I thought, you poor, poor thing. I will plant you on this poor, north-facing land that the EU describes as marginal. Marginal? <laughs> oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Here I am, as promised, out in the Bluebell Woods. Jack, as you can see, just loves this place. So the bluebells are still just about out. And uh, I've just come in from the road there. You just see the road. <laughs> Kicking up all the leaves. <laughs> come on, Jack, mushta. <laughs> he gets incredibly delirious. Look at this, isn't it beautiful? Many of these trees here are beech trees. You can see they're quite, quite tall. And of course the bluebells, they just spread year on year. I've been down here before collecting the seed from the bluebells, which is very easy to do. You just wait for them to go over and then you come along with a little paper bag and you collect little bits of seed, hither and thither. Wonderful bird song this afternoon. I'm just walking away from the road now, so there'll be less and less noise of traffic. Ireland is slowly coming out of lockdown. Uh, we're now allowed to go up to five metres away from our homes for exercise. So I think Doreen Woods is about within that range. It's about five metres. And it is, as you can see, just a beautiful place to go. I feel very blessed to live so near to a place like this. But I think generally, actually, within the area that I live, which is way off the tourist trail and everything, you know, it's probably one of the more beautiful areas of, um, of this part of Ireland. There are very few people in the woods now at the moment. don't usually see an awful lot of people anywhere down here. Maybe one or two. Of course, before the lockdown happened, this was a favourite place for um, people who were getting married to come to have their photographs done you know for the album and you can understand why I think what's beautiful down here is all the dappled shade you know so you can see out there look there's farmland out there look at the size of some of these trees Are they amazing
the old stone walls. Of course, very few people build stone walls these days. You know, the dry stone walls, that is. There was real skill in building those. I've done a little bit of dry stone walling myself many years ago. And, um, I mean, you do need a lot of strength to do it. But I think that, from my point of view, it was quite easy to do. I suppose being used to sewing patchwork and, you know, to do all those things that sort of require that visual balance. So I was probably faster at it in terms of putting the right stones in place. Come on, Jack. So you can see there, look in the distance, the dry stone wall goes all the way around this piece of um, woodland. I think it was probably part of the old Anglo-Irish estate of Loch Key. Um, I think it was the King family. The King family actually owned the estate. Now, can you see all these tiny little beech trees coming up? This is where I often come in the autumn just to dig up the odd one, and I mean the odd one, because these little trees have no chance of surviving. There's too many of them, they're competing, and there's too much shade. So some of the beech trees I built in the cottage come here, come from here, Doreen Wood. You can hear children in the, in the distance. Now I'm going to show you some wild garden just over here on the edge of the woodland. Gosh, look at this. Look at these colours, aren't they beautiful? Leaving his mark on every tree he possibly can. Look at this. See all those white flowers? That's wild garlic, otherwise known as ramsons. And if you could smell what I can smell, you would know immediately that there was garlic here. Isn't that beautiful? Here's lots and lots of wild garlic. Masses of it. And it's spread over into the field beyond the stone wall. You see? I'll just walk through there so you can see. A little path has been made.
Now, if a certain lady called Eileen is watching this video today, um, I think it was someone called Eileen, but anyway, someone who I think is called Eileen, but may not be, <laughs> sent me a lovely little card with a cheque in it to cover the cost of the Midwinter book, I think it is. But you didn't send me your address. Please, can you email me? Okay, I'm going to put the email up on the website, bealtonacottage.com. In fact, I might even put... In fact, I will put the email address below this video today. Okay? So just email me with your address. I just thought of that as I was walking along. I thought I'd better pop that in there. So right now on the little road, I think this road has been purposefully made um, deep into the Sitka spruce forest for um, removal of trees. Of course, which is done every 20 years or so. Sadly, by machine. But even in the Sitka spruce, there's little bits of life. Not a lot, because of the monoculture. But I don't think it's too bad down here, because there's other trees interspersed. We'll see them as we walk along. A few nice oak trees. Of course, round an oak tree, you have this incredible um, habitation of life. Um, there was a study done on oak trees that uh, talked about how many different insects and birds and small mammals lived amidst the abundance of the oak tree. So I've walked about a mile, maybe a mile and a half. Um, I've just gone deeper and deeper into the woods. So I've gone out of what is the Sitka spruce plantation and just further into what is sort of deciduous woodland. Again, lots and lots of wild garlic. You can see just the whiteness of the flowers, which is rather beautiful. And further, up further, I don't know if you can see them, there's bluebells. I'm pointing into the light now, so it might not be great to be able to see. So this is the little track I've come along. Um, I'm not too sure where this is leading me. I can't remember coming along this track before. I hope I'm not lost. <laughs> oh dear, it might be some time before this video is uploaded. That's a sign I like to see. Land preserved, no hunting. Now this is really weird. Because I see an old house there. Look at that. I can I just can't remember ever coming down this way before. And there's an old fence there as well. Let's see what's up ahead. Well, this is an entrance to Oakport House. But I know I've seen a sign for Oakport House. Um, miles and miles in another direction. Away from these woods. This looks like an old gatehouse or something. Isn't that interesting? Private residence. A lot of stone here. Ah, Oak Port House. That might be something you'd like to like to look at on Google Maps. Let me just come a little bit closer. 
I don't want to be rude and intrude in anyone's place. It looks quite ancient, doesn't it? Look at the beautiful the beautiful fence posts. Wow. This is a bit of an adventure, isn't it? Well, I think at this point I'm now officially lost. So, um... These seem to be part of the grounds of Oakport House. So I think what I'll do is I'll double back and try to keep to the same route that I came up on. It would be interesting to explore this further. Well, blessings to you all on this beautiful evening. I'm heading home now with Jack. I think we've walked about three miles. <sighs> Certainly feels like it anywhere on my feet. Jack, come on. The Altonal Cottage books are printed here in Ireland, not offshored or uploaded to Amazon or any other corporation. They're printed in Ireland and they're posted from Ireland. And I do all the work here myself. This is best practice permaculture. This is not being a hypocrite and saying I practice permaculture and then have my books printed and delivered by Amazon. It's truly local, 100%.